a prayer. What is the child but a mother's hope that takes flight? A glowing flame that climbs the air, set free to the wind, sailing the sky till it fades and falls. So, from one to another, passes the chain of love. There's Owen. I have some questions for him. Your blessing was most illuminating. I've never seen its like. A rare gift indeed. But you don't believe in all mother, do you? Usually the the distance between our tribes shrouds Nora ways from Karja eyes. But here among you, I see a beauty that shines true. Perhaps Mammon is right after all, that the sun's light brightens all lands and all peoples. Who's Naman? One of my brethren, who believes the sky is wide enough for the faiths of all tribes. Who is the Who sun king speaking for? His luminance Avad is the 14th king of the Radiant Line. His light envelops the sky and everything beneath it. He is the chosen of the sun. By his divine rule, we are given sight and purpose. You speak highly of him. Do you know him well? By his nature, he is unknowable and infallible. We are his instruments, not his companions. I have been in his presence. But we draw down our hoods, so as not to behold his light directly. He's the sun, he has total power, and no friends. That couldn't go wrong. <laughs> if your sun kings are so infallible, how do you explain the crimes of the last king? Uh, well, the sun's glory is a great and brazen crown for a vessel as small as a man. If the vessel is flawed, Indeed, in the burial caves, one can see the skulls of the past kings are cracked, trialed and fired in the sun's kiln. That can be too much for any man to bear, even a ruler of men. So the sun can make bad choices like anyone else? Oh, oh no, 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 no. Has there ever, been, there a ever been a sun queen? Uh, uh, many wives and consorts, of course. Or, oh, you mean for the son to choose a queen? <laughs> this has not happened. Why not? The son is masculine, of course, and, and so would choose its heirs thus. Um, it's a light in the sky. I've never seen anything dangling from it. I don't know if you've noticed, but women run things around here. Well, Avad <laughs> took a woman as captain of his vanguard, the first to hold such an honor. You mean Aaron's sister, Ursa. From what he told me, she sounds formidable. Oh, formidable indeed. A woman, and an outsider as well. She might make a fine sun queen, given a chance. A sun queen? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. No. Who are you, sun priest? I am the Reverend Yurid. The glory of the Karja is the sun's glory, reflected. We sun priests are but glimmers of its great light. You just said a lot, but you didn't tell me anything. <laughs> My apologies. My duty is to carry out the will of the sun by serving its emissary among us, the sun king. I comfort those who walk by the light of day, and I travel to those in far reaches whom the light barely touches, bearing warmth. So you live in Meridian? I do. I do. Where better to mark the sun's divine passage than where the sandstone glows in the light of its passing. I was raised in the Mesa's great shade, its wild bird markets and metal sellers, spices and colored silks. Sounds impressive. Oh, you should behold it. And you can if you make the journey. At his luminance's order, we have flung its gates open to all. Any Nora who leaves the sacred land becomes an exile. But hey, who knows where I'll end up. 
Did you come all this way just to deliver your Sun King's speech? It is my duty, and also my honor, to carry the light of atonement to those we overshadowed and wronged. I swallowed my fear, but it re-emerged. I am glad Erend Van Guardsman made this journey. He is my shield, a good man. Why were the Karja at war with the Nora? Under the 13th Sun King, the Karja had no peace with any tribe. His luminance has sent those days to dusk. We must renew the light that binds us, though few volunteered to come here. The Nora scare you. They're good at making people feel unwelcome. It's said one soldier died for every Nora taken alive. But <laughs> I see you can be as calm as you are fierce. This has been illuminating, but I should get going. You have, you have already been blessed, but may the, may dawn, the dawn find you, the day warm you, and the dusk have light to guide your path. Hold on one second, folks. Let me send out. I shall ask the dawn for your success. Aloy, now that the blessing has been made, you and I finally have a moment to speak. I hope the ceremony wasn't too unpleasant for you, given your circumstances. I can't say it was comfortable, but I could see the beauty of the ritual, even so. It takes a generous heart, Aloy, to commend a ritual that venerates all that you were denied. All I'm saying is that it didn't bother me. I have bigger things to worry about than hearing the Nora mumble about their mothers. I see. I imagine you must have questions for me, then. Why was I made an outcast at birth, Tirsa? What crime, crime could I have committed, I committed even before I was born? Aloy, Aloy. <laughs> this is not a question I can answer. Why not? It's simple enough. And what about, and what my, about mother? my mother? Is she here tonight, tonight watching, me? watching me? Or is she dead? Is she here? Or nowhere? I am I sure am your sure mother your is mother. here with us, if only in spirit. <laughs> That's not really an answer, is it? Just so you know, Tirsa, the reason I'm here is to get answers. Real ones. And when I win the proving, I will demand them. I know, I know, I know. I would expect nothing less. It surprises me the tribe lets outcasts run in the proving. It's not like the Nora to be so hospitable. It has always been law that any child outcast has this right, as a means to rejoin the tribe. So far as I know, however, you are the first ever to exercise this right. I'm not surprised. I doubt many outcast children survive long enough in the wilds to come of age. I think, rather, it is because child outcasts are so rare. In all my years, I've only known of one other child who was cast out. A boy of 13, who killed his mother. But at the proving five years later, he did not appear. No, no. I'd be surprised if he survived very long on his own. 
But at least he had a chance. Other tribes would have simply executed him. It may be hard for you to accept, Aloy. But the practice of shunning is, relatively speaking, humane. Oh, is it? Try it out for eight three years, Tirsa, and then let me know what you think. What about Ross? Why was he made an outcast? So, he never told you? He said he swore an oath never to speak of it. Yes. As did I, and the other matriarchs. I'm sorry, Aloy. But Rost's past is another secret I must keep from you. What else is new? Rost told me that matriarchs don't just lead the tribe. What else do you do? We teach. Offer counsel. Give blessings. When necessary, we judge. Our only concern is the welfare of the tribe. Among our number this year, we count three high matriarchs and some thirty lesser matriarchs. What's the difference? Matriarchs are grandmothers with two generations of living progeny. But a high matriarch is a great-grandmother with three or more generations to her name. Thus do we speak for generations, lending our opinions weight. The high matriarchs most of all. So, the more children you have, the more authority you get? I guess that's one way to decide who leads a tribe. Why would there be any other? Why does Lanzara hate me so much? She is a woman of extreme opinions. More than that, I cannot say. It's not my fault that I was born, or that the matriarchs decided to cast me out. I side with you in this matter, but there are differences of opinion. And any and vote any of the High Matriarchs high requires a majority. I should be going. I'm sorry if I've been too harsh. It's just... I've wanted answers for so long. I know, child. You're not the only one who's waited years for this day. I will be praying for your success. That blessing, that blessing wasn't, wasn't bad. bad. Nice and short, anyway. But I know a half dozen Asaram tinkers who could put on a better fireworks show. Oops. I hope I'm not throwing the wet blanket on your sacred ritual. It was nice. Really. Yeah, well, good luck in that proving thing. Maybe I'll see you in Meridian someday. Who knows? My name. Ah, uh, guess Aaron told you. Why did you act so strange when we spoke earlier? Must be this festival. I'm really not one for crowds. Maybe I should just turn it. Stop dodging my questions. All right, cool your fire. I got nothing to hide. What are you doing here? Why, Why come to Norland? Aaron needed a scout for his expedition and a second for his drinking. That's all. Someone to stop the Sun Priest getting lost. When all this is over, I'm back to delving ruins, rummaging for scrap, scrounging up trinkets to sell. So you're an explorer? Just another outlander, girl. A man's gotta make his shards. I just make mine in service to the King's court. That's all. I've never seen anyone else with a focus. Where exactly did you find it? In a ruin, north of the claim. That's our name for the Asaram homeland. Up there, the metal seams run deep. Steel giants half buried in loose soil. Forgotten caves the old ones bored into mountain rock. Your eyes just lit up. I found my focus in a cave just like you're describing. A ruin of the old ones. If you've delved yourself, you know as much as I do. Go to those places for answers. Not me. When we spoke when we earlier, you winced, went. then looked like you were in pain, or frightened. Did your focus show you something? It didn't show me anything. I told you. It malfunctioned. Happens all the time. Mine's never malfunctioned, and I've had it since I was a child. So yours is in better shape, then? 